Well, first off, sorry about uh, where I'm doing the thing here, but that's where the map is, uh, like where I printed off the stuff there. And I'm going to, if you guys ever want, I'll show you how to do mosaic printing or whatever. You like, you use a little printer and be able to, uh, you know, you actually, basically what you need to do is just grab iFrag View or some kind of graphics thing and just chop up the image and then, you know, go from there and restitch it kind of thing afterwards. Um, so anyways, here's what, um, um, these are just basically the general headquarters for most of the armies for the Ottoman Empire that are going to be set up. It's basically so that at least now the Brits can see what the heck's around. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, all the troops are going to be spread out a little bit. I've got ages to go to figure out who's in what army and so on and so forth. But I will say one thing. At least I've got the general objectives or the general strategy or what the heck's going on with the Ottomans. Basically, what it is the, is this. They're trying to carve out their own future their own path. And as far as they are concerned, the path of least resistance is away from Europe, away from the Balkans at the moment, and away from Russia. That's why they wanted to sign a, uh, a non-aggression pact with Russia, and it succeeded. Uh, so now they can focus their attention on the path of least resistance, which is down south. And so basically I've arranged the armies into uh, five armies, and then they have a reserve corps here of uh, three infantry divisions sitting over near Mosul. And then, uh, so I've got the first and second army, with the first army being basically the best equipped, and so on and so forth, uh, over here. So the first army is gonna be, um, first and second army are basically what I'm calling uh, down here the um, the Egyptian front. And uh, first army is gonna be the the main, I've got a long way to go. I've got, there's so many constraints about this desert and and the climate and so on and so forth. There's a lot of things to think about, but at least, like I said, the Brits have got something to look at and go, okay, this is what's going on. Uh, they can kind of get the general idea. So the first and second army, that's their focus is the Egyptian front. And it's to take out the Suez Canal, quite frankly. Um, and I think these little uh, rough areas there are going to be extremely important to try to figure out uh, some way of setting up supply deep. Like I said, it's ages away to figure this out. So the third army is at the uh, the home front, which is near uh, Istanbul, and this is off map. It's way off on the other uh, thing here. Um, the fourth army is for the Persian front, what I'm calling the Persian front, and um, yeah, that's what they're. So basically, the second, third, and fourth armies are going to be more or less equal strength wise, if you want to call it that. And then the fifth army, I'm sorry, this is what I'm calling it. It's uh, gonna, I'm calling it the Armenian front, and this is going to be the least. Um, able army almost like a you know just like a i don't know a, a border army or kind of thing but um and i i'm not trying to be provocative i'm not trying to be whatever here but i, I also did want to include this in my narrative and so on and so forth and um i i, I tried to figure out a way of being at least uh um yeah i don't want to piss anybody off or be you know thinking whatever but i, I do want it part of my narrative so what's going to happen essentially is once um, the Ottomans reach 350 demoralization points, which I think is their shaken national morale uh, spot, uh, it, I'm using uh, something similar to um, uh, the unrestricted submarine warfare. And basically what's going to happen is once they've reached 350 de demoralization points, uh, they'll have to roll a die and on a one or a two, they'll be, uh, begin mass deportation on the um, and um, after that following and it'll increment by one each month and then after that um, the following month after that there's a chance just like the United States entering the war it'll be that uh, the Russians decide to declare war on um, like you know uh, basically void the non-aggression pact and declare war on the Ottoman Empire and maybe party of, uh, are saying I was at two as well going at the beginning saying that kind of doesn't really make any sense, especially if there's not going to be any real uh, combats towards um, over here. Why in the world would the Ottomans start doing uh, mass deportations? It doesn't make sense. And uh, the way I'm looking at it, I'm not trying to get all philosophical or whatever, like I said. But did historically, did it make sense? Did um, the Germans, what they did in Belgium, make sense? Did um, what the Austro-Hungarians do to the Serb, uh, like when they were in Serbia, did that make sense? Did... Um, What's, uh, you know, a lot of Serbians do to uh, prisoners of war of the Austro-Hungarians and so on and so forth. A lot, of, a lot of things don't make sense. 
uh, but I like I wanted to keep part of that narrative in there. So it's going to be odd in the sense that you know all this non-aggression pack. I mean, 350 demoralization points isn't all that much, but uh, I got a long way to go to figure this out. Hold on, I'll show you some other stuff. This has got World War One espionage RPG written all over it. I was thinking about this for a while now, and I went, wait a flipping minute, what? Is, where? Uh, anyways. So this dude, as far as I know, was, uh, was a member of the royal uh, Ottoman royal family. He was smuggled across the Egyptian border. They used a submarine. So anyways, what I'm saying is, can you imagine doing like, I don't know, GURPS espionage or something like that? And I think that's where it's part of it. It was par part of the thing trying to get the, um, I think the Arabs to revolt against the Italians or something in Libya and so on and so forth. Uh, so I guess it wouldn't be, yeah. Anyways, um, I... I just remember uh, listening to this in passing a few months ago, uh, one of the Nebula podcasts on uh, Italy and uh, getting into World War One, and it just was like, God, that sounds so intriguing! Like this little spy stuff, and you know, uh, gold being smuggled via submarine and and weapons and all kind and plans, and you know, I just was like, and then afterwards, I was like, Wow. Imagine being like a British espionage dude or something, hanging out, waiting for your informant who's got some piece of juicy information and, um, you know, it's supposed to meet up at your regular coffee shop in Cairo and doesn't show up. And then, you you know, there's reports of his body uh, floating in the Nile, that type of stuff. And I was like, holy smokes, man, this has got RPG written all over it. Um, anyways, yeah, that's, uh, I think it's got RPG written all over it. Uh, sadly, I did have the camcorder set up, and I was, well, be honest with you, all I, I've got it all written down here for these com uh, combats. All I have to do, basically, is drop the needle, and, uh, you know, like, uh, and that's that. But it gets to this point. I'm also thinking about, like, I use it life-wise or whatever, if you want to call it that. I always uh, try to remind myself, thought, or thought decision, if you want to call it that, thought, action, consequence. Um, I try to remind myself of those three things when I do, trust me, not to, I don't remind myself very often, unfortunately, but, uh, um, you know, it's like, okay, thought, action, consequence, that's basically life in many ways, so uh, anyway, so these are going to happen, but not, yeah, uh, this is just to remind me of uh, getting some more troops over there, it's getting there, look, look, the line is slowly, I mean, it's fragile, like, you know, it's just, I mean, the shell is so thin, you can see right through. It's almost like the membrane of, uh, there's no actual calcium left of the shell. It's just that thin membrane. But um, getting there, getting there. And like I said, the Germans can't do everything. But, oh, my God, there's going to be a whole hell of a lot of hurt coming up. I, can, I was just looking. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. They got supply points coming out of the yin-yang over here. And, um, yeah, it's not going to be good. Okay, hold on. I'll show you from, from the um, German perspective. Yeah, so I was, like I said, all I need to do basically is roll the dice, um, well, one die at a time for uh, over here. Uh, the bottom one there, um, that's going to be partially supplied. So uh, the fourth army down there is going to supply a little bit. Um, I'll look them up later. Hold on, I think I've got my book around here. Yeah, I'll get out. But it's like the 7th Infantry Division and the 150th or something going up against the... 16th or something landwehr brigade down at the bottom there number 14 that's gonna be partially um uh partially supplied but the uh the kicker is for the germans is that uh, they've got a uh, core hq up there i think it's core hq 7 or core hq 5 up there with four supply points and then they've got the warch um army hq right there warsh uh, army hq that can also supply uh the counter attack um 20 supply points sitting over there um there's, uh, I think, uh, all said and done, uh, with, it's going to be uh, five, I think, five attacking strength points um, against that one little guy over there, um, but uh, defending across woods. So I think it comes down to uh, the, the Russians will need a five or a six um, to, to have anything happen. So And then the other one up there is going to be my, uh, you know, that uh, win, loser, draw, unsupplied thingamajig. And since um, they're also uh, defending across woods, that's going to be uh, just a one in six chance that um, they'll be able to force a retreat. Uh, but remember, um, the Germans still get to counterattack normally. Um, so if they can fully supply the uh, counterattack and so on and so forth. 
Um, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And those purple little dudes over here, are just to remind me that I actually use those single tracks for now. Um, that's about it. Um, yeah, I'll let you, well, I'll let you go. Um, I got, you know, get ready for work and so on and so forth. But uh, on a side note, holy cow, man, I got comments left or right and center. And uh, that's to me the, you know, the most important thing. So I'm like, I got to go off and uh, um, do a, nah, it was actually I felt bad. There was a couple of them. Well, it was the exact same question. So I, I cut and pasted a previous reply, but I, was, I felt kind of like I was um, being, I don't know, let pe people down or something. It just felt like I, I, I got to stop doing that. Anyways, that's it. I hope you have a great Friday and uh, or Saturday or whatever day it is. Okay, that's it. See you later.